Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing GABA-ray receptors and the benzodiazepines. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the uh, subunit composition of the GABA-ray receptors. So we've seen now that there are 19 different genes for uh, GABA-ray receptor subunits. So we've seen that these 19 genes are separated into different families. So you firstly have the alpha family, consisting of the alpha 1 through alpha 6 gene. You then have the beta family, which remember has three members in it, the beta 1 through beta 3 genes. You then have the gamma family, which has three members in it as well, the gamma 1 through gamma 3 genes. And uh, you then have uh, the delta epsilon, theta, and pi genes, which aren't in families, they're standalone. And then finally, you have the rho family, which consists of rho 1 through rho 3. And this creates you all uh, 19 separate uh, receptor subunits of the GABA-A receptor. Now, how do we actually put them together? So I've alluded to in the previous video that it is uh, not simple. You do not just make homopentamers. You don't just, for each one of these 19 genes, uh, put five of them together to make a uh, homopentamer, and therefore you'd end up with 19 different receptors. No, it's more complicated than that. Instead, you can make heteropentamers. Now, there is an absolutely huge scope for making a vast number of different GABA-A receptors. However, um, the ones that are actually physically, uh, well, physiologically important, so the ones that are expressed in large amounts in the brain, generally conform to a certain structure. So let me talk you through this very slowly. So, the general structure that they all conform to, well, the what, well, not all of them, but the main ones that are uh, expressed in large numbers, the most important ones, are that you have two alpha subunits, Okay, two beta subunits and one gamma subunit, although there are more constraints on it than that, so let me explain. So, if we're looking at the GABA-A receptor from above then, basically, the rules for making GABA-A receptors generally conform to uh, this. Okay, so I'll firstly just outline the um, five separate subunits here. Okay, now the rules for making a GABA-A receptor are like so. You pick one of the alpha members, basically. You pick one of the genes within this alpha family, okay? So you've selected your gene now. You use that gene twice to make two proteins. So you make two copies of this same receptor subunit. You then stick it, one of them here, and the second one here, okay? What you then do is you go to the beta family, you choose one of the members within that beta family and you take that gene and you transcribe it twice. You then get two mRNAs which you translate and you get two identical protein subunits. You then put them here and also here. Finally, you go to the gamma family and you pick one of the genes out of there and you transcribe it once and you put it here. So that's what I meant by you have two alpha subunits, two beta subunits, and a gamma subunit. But I want to stress something here. You do not have two different alpha subunits in here. You don't have an alpha 1 here and an alpha 2 here. No, they have to be identical alpha subunits. This is the usual structure that GABA-A receptors obey. They have these two identical alpha subunits, these two identical beta subunits, and this one gamma subunit, and they're arranged relative to one another like so. So let's give this picture a bit of colour to... Um, spice it up a little bit. Right, okay, so you will notice that there are a huge number of genes, these ones down here for a start, that would never ever be used if these were the only GABA-A receptors that you could build. And they're not the only ones you can build. These subunits are used, but in more niche GABA-A receptors. So the most important ones uh, that you need to know about do indeed conform to this structure where you have these two alpha subunits, 
these two beta subunits and these two, uh, sorry, and this single gamma subunit. Okay, now this simplifies it down somewhat, but you will realize that there is still an absolutely massive number of receptors that conform to this structure which you can actually make. So, uh, let me show you now the most important GABA ray receptors of this type that actually occur within the brain. Okay, so when you're naming GABA ray receptors, the way that you do it is you write it like so. So let me show you now the type of GABA ray receptor that is the most common. This is the most important one in the brain. So it's the alpha 1, beta 2, gamma 2 uh, GABA ray receptor. Now, when you write it like this, you basically assume that the reader knows what they're talking about because you assume they realize that you mean it's got this structure. So when they write it like this, all they're telling you is which alpha subunit you put in these two positions, and in this case it's the alpha 1, which beta subunit you put in these two positions, and in this case it's the beta 2, and which gamma subunit you put in here, okay? So they're assuming you know this already, and then they're just telling you what, which specific alpha subunit you pick, which specific beta subunit you pick, and which specific gamma subunit you pick. So let's draw this receptor out now. Okay, so again we'll draw one of these cartwheel diagrams here, where the pores in the middle, and we have these five separate subunits making up the pentameric GABA A receptor. And now we know that the alpha subunit here is alpha 1 twice, so you use the alpha 1 gene twice to make two copies of the alpha 1 subunit. You then use the beta 2 gene twice to make two copies of the beta 2 subunit here. And then finally you use the gamma subunit here, so here's gamma 2. Right, so that is this most common form of the GABA A receptor that you have within uh, the brain, basically. So this is very, very important, this alpha 1, beta 2, gamma 2, GABA A receptor. Right, let's move on to um, the second most important one. So another one that's very highly expressed, but not quite as highly as this one. If you're going to just learn one GABA ray receptor, this is the one to learn. This is massive. This is the main one within the brain. Right, so now let's do another one. So the next one I'm going to talk about is the alpha 2, beta 3, gamma 2. Subunit. So again, all this shows you is which, um, which alpha subunit you're using, which beta subunit you're using, and which gamma subunit you're using. So let's draw it out to make it crystal, crystal clear so that we're getting the idea of how to uh, draw these and what they really mean. Okay, so here's the pore here. Again, we have these five separate subunits making up the GABA ray receptor. One, two, three, four, five. And then we have the two alpha-2 subunits, so alpha-2 and another alpha-2. Then we go to the beta-3 gene, make two copies of this, and stick them in these two positions. And then finally, go to the gamma-2 gene, and make a single copy of that, and stick it in that position. Okay, so this is another very important uh, GABA ray receptor within the brain, the alpha-2, beta-3, gamma-2 subunit. Now, I'm going to slightly um, cheat with you now because there are three more GABA ray receptors that I want to show you. However, I didn't want to have to draw all three, and they're very, very similar structure. So what I'm going to do is basically draw them all as one. So, basically they have the same alpha subunit and the same gamma subunit, but they can have whichever beta subunit you like. So it can be beta 1 to 3 that you pick, and then gamma 2. So all of these three receptors are really important, basically. So I want you to know them all, uh, but I don't want to have to draw them all out uh, three times. But I will at least write their names out. So basically, under this heading, what we're really talking about is the alpha 3, beta 1, gamma 2 receptor, the alpha 3, beta 2, gamma 2 receptor, and the alpha 3, beta-3 gamma-2 receptor. So there are three separate GABA A receptors that I'm all clustering together in this one group, basically. And the, all three of these are important in the brain. They are expressed uh, non-trivially. Uh, trivially. I 
I struggle with that word, trivially. Uh, they're expressed non-trivially within the brain. So, I'll draw the general structure of them by just sticking in a beta for the beta subunit rather than saying specifically which of the three it is. So, here is our receptor. You should be getting bored of these pictures now, hopefully, so you can remember them. And then these are, here are these five separate subunits. And then we have alpha-3 sitting here and here. We have an arbitrary beta sitting here. It could be beta-1, it could be beta-2, it could be beta-3. And then over here it's gamma-2. So that's the structure of these final three GABA-A receptors. And these five are the ones which are very important and highly expressed within the brain. Okay, so now that we've covered that, uh, what we're going to do is start looking at their pharmacology. Uh, but actually, before we move on to their pharmacology, I suppose I should actually show you where the GABA binding sites are. So where does GABA actually bind uh, on these uh, extracellular faces of these GABA-A receptors? Well, basically, GABA binds in the um, cavity between two subunits, specifically in the cavity between the alpha and the beta subunit. So GABA will bind in here. So these circles here, these represent GABA A bind sorry, GABA binding sites. So this is where GABA will bind. So this is the gamma amino butyric acid binding site. And you can see that you have two of them on each of the GABA A receptors which are of this form here where you have two alpha subunits, two beta subunits, and a gamma subunit. So in this form, you're going to have whichever receptor that's of this form that you have, you're going to have two GABA binding sites, basically. So two GABA molecules will have to bind to the um, GABA A receptor in order to activate it. Right, so in the next video, what we'll do is turn our attention to the pharmacology of these receptors. So we'll look at agonists for this GABA binding site, antagonists for this GABA binding site, and then uh, open pore blockers, which are going to actually go into the pore when it's open and just block it. Okay, see you then.